This is a part two because my video got interrupted by a FaceTime call, even though I had my phone on. Do not disturb that call just kept coming through and I had to decline it. So I left off talking about Steven and Monica. Um, I... So she sees the text messages. They have a sexual relationship. I know there was... Prior to us learning about these text messages, there were conversations about Steven wanting to do butt stuff, anal. I probably can't say that on here, but at this point, I already said it. On uh, a previous episode, right? And Monica not being into it. At that point, I didn't connect anything, right? I just thought, okay, he wants to do anal. They probably haven't had open conversations about sex and different sexual preferences, etc. I don't think it's a huge deal. I don't, I don't think anal is like this really bizarre thing. I don't even think it's a kink, honestly. Honestly, I think like anal is... I'm not going to say it's standard, but I don't think it's like crazy. Um, but I guess like, I don't know, you know, I, I personally find, um, sex to be a very, it can be very complicated and complex. Different people have different interests, different kinks, different fetishes. I find all of those things really intriguing. Um, I would love to see these text messages, not on a weird tip, but just like, I'm so curious, like, what were these specific kinks that this girl was fulfilling and Steven that are uncommon, you know, like some people, and I'm not gonna go down the list, right? But there, there are some weird kinks out there, right? Some people want to dress up as babies. Some people want to be put in cages. Some people want to be urinated on. Like, I wonder what his level was only because I find it very intriguing. Um, and for that, like I saw this other YouTube video regarding, um, this couple and their issues and different people have different opinions on kinks. I think, I think sex is a spectrum, right? I think that there are people that are on the vanilla side and vanilla side is like basic standard positions, um, only intercourse through, primary genitalia, no oral sex, no anal, etc. There's people on that end that are like on the very vanilla side, just strictly one way have sex regularly. And then there's people in the middle and then there's people on the far right, which is more like on the extreme side where you get into your kinks and stuff. I think sex is a spectrum. Different people fall on the spectrum, but I do think that sexual compatibility is extremely important. I know people that have gotten married to someone, right? And will continue to seek out relations with other people that fulfill their fantasies because the person that they married is too vanilla for them. So I think it's important to have sexual compatibility, especially when you talk about long-term relationships. Like it's not gonna work. If you're on this end of the spectrum and you're with a vanilla person, you're gonna go out of your marriage to find whatever is missing, right? So that's just another piece. So, and that's Seems like that's what was going to happen, right? Like Steven was not getting what he wanted. I know they weren't having sex. And I'm not saying that's an excuse, but it's something that people need to consider and be realistic about both Steven and Monica, right? You need to talk about well, what do you like in sex? Well, I'm willing to do this. I'm not willing to do this. Okay, maybe we're not sexually compatible. I'm not saying it's excusable to cheat, but I think it's important to have conversations about sexual preferences so that there can be compatibility and there can be longevity in that relationship. Moving on. This couple did not make it to the honeymoon, and I'm not surprised. I don't think any of us are. Leo and Brittany. Leo was the guy that was an art dealer, if he even is. I haven't looked into what he's up to or what he really has done or doesn't do. Um, talked about how much money he had, how much money he grew into. Um, just He said, you know, he doesn't want money to be about him. But oh my God, if I had a dollar for every time he kept saying like how much money he has, how much money he has, how he doesn't want people to just want him for his money. It's just like those people that it's like, okay, at this point, my dude, you want people to really know you have money. And maybe the fact that you're saying it so much makes me think you may not have as much money that you say you have. Because people that talk about things a lot usually don't got it. Because when you got it like that, you don't talk about it like that. You're really low key about it. And I know because I've been around people with money, like you're low, you're not going to be like, flashy people that really have money they're not flashy usually so leo was torn between hannah and Brittany. was trying to manipulate hannah when she wanted to break up with him for nick and then ultimately he picks Brittany. let's talk about Brittany briefly because really i don't care about either of them that much but they're on my list because they were one of the couples that almost made it there and i have things to say about both of them Brittany, one, she's a gold digger. I don't care what anyone says. Brittany was clearly a gold digger. She made that very clear. She wanted to be a, um, she wanted to be taken care of. She made that very clear. 
Um, she said, what was funny about Britney at the very beginning, I think it was like episode two where I'm like, I don't even know if I can sit through this whole season because I thought it was whack as fuck. But what was so funny about Britney, she's like, you know, I can marry, I think she's something like, I can marry any man I want. Any man here, I can make them marry me and I can be happy. And in my mind, I'm like, if you could make any man marry you, you wouldn't be on Love is Blind, trying to get chosen, crying over Leo, and trying to get married. Because if it were that easy for you to find a man to marry you, you would have found him in the real world and you wouldn't have applied to a dating show that ends up in marriage. So I think it's funny like when people say things and they don't realize there's a button. And they don't realize that it's like, it's giving delusional. It's giving delusional. The last thing I want to say is when Leo and Brittany met, and I knew, like even before they met, I knew both Hannah and um, Brittany were like into Leo. I think that Leo, I think he's really intellectual and I think that that could be captivating. And the fact that he had money or said he had money was like intriguing as well. But I think that both of them had this different image of Leo. First of all, Leo, if you ever watch this video, which I know you won't, you needed a haircut, my guy. Who let you come on that show without that haircut? Like a haircut would have done him well. He does look like an 18 year old boy, but it's like he needed a haircut. A haircut would have like elevated his look. I don't know if it's an artsy fartsy thing going on, Leo needed a haircut. The girls had this idea of what he was gonna look like and Leo is scrawny. He needed a haircut and he looked like he was 18. He didn't match anything of what they wanted. Maybe intellectually he was there, maybe there was good conversation, he had money, but his look was not giving what they wanted. So I knew when Brittany saw him, I knew she was not gonna be attracted to him. Did I know that they weren't gonna make it to the honeymoon? No. But when she said like, let's go to Miami, let's not go to, where did they go, Mexico? It's a blur, I don't know where the fuck they went. They were in, not Tulum, they were in Los Cabos. Yeah, when she's like, let's just go to Miami if we don't go to Mexico. And I'm just like, she just wants to get a free trip out of this. And she's like, I don't wanna be on camera with this man because I know this man is gonna like try to be kissing up on me and I'm not attracted to him. And I'm sorry. And I don't think Leo's ugly. I just think Leo needed a haircut and I think he's scrawny as hell and he looks like he's 18, but I don't think he's ugly. Okay, moving on. Um, Tyler. And Ashley. I think Ashley A. I think Ashley is gorgeous. When I saw her, I'm like, I want to marry Ashley. Like, I'll marry Ashley. Like, I think she's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. She seems to have a lovely personality. She seems to be super sweet, caring, and kind. And trust me, I thought Tyler was cute too. Tyler was giving, he was giving Drake. And I'm like, okay. I would go for someone like Tyler. Tyler's my type. Um, and I was really excited for them. I was really, really, really rooting for them. Not that I'm not anymore, but once I discovered more um, regarding Tyler, so if you don't know, but like I said at the beginning of this video, hopefully you do know by now, um, Tyler has three children that he supposedly helped out a friend. Uh, Same-sex couple have children. Um, he calls it sperm donation. The person that he had children with has been going on social media saying this is not a sperm donation. He said that he, um, that the last Christmas that he made a dinner for himself and stayed at home. There are pictures and videos of him with his kids having dinner with his family. She actually asked him, do the kids know what you look like? And he says, I don't think so. There are pictures and videos of him with the kids. The kids have an established relationship with him. So it's not just one lie. It's like a multifaceted lie that he lies that he's been feeding her. And I think that, again, like many people that come on this show, and myself included, we're ready. We're ready to get married. We're ready to find love. We're ready to find something meaningful and real. And I think that that's what happened with Ashley, right? She's like, I'm ready. I'm attracted to this person. We have an emotional connection. Yes, there are these lies, but you know what? I'm gonna ignore the lies and I'm gonna go with it. Unfortunately, that's what I think happened with Ashley. Hopefully, those are the only lies. I know I also heard that, heard. I also um, saw that uh, he has like some debts. I think he owes a friend like $30,000 and I think he owes like back child support. And the mom of the children was saying like, I will expose you if you don't like clarify this and you're being like, reducing my kids to a sperm donation. So there's a lot of drama unfolding. I wonder what's gonna come up with the reunion. I guess, I guess 
again, it's going to depend on like what kind of questions are going to get asked by the host. But um, I hope if they stay together, I hope that Tyler is not full of shit. Uh, I saw this video where they were saying that Tyler's a Libra and I guess, I don't know, I guess Libras are full of shit. I didn't know that. Um, my dog is a Libra and he's a really zen sweet guy. But um, I've dated two Libras. I've dated two Libras in my life. Um, I don't know if I was lied to by either of them yet, but I'm sure if I was, I'm sure it'll come to light. So I hope that Tyler and Ashley work out long term and I hope she's not making a mistake by still like hanging on to that relationship. Garrett and Taylor, um, Garrett and Taylor are the least eventful couple. I know that's mean, but I'm just like, sometimes, you know, I feel like every time they have a season, there's always that couple that's like so boring to me that I just like want to fast forward because I really, I don't care. I don't care if you guys stay together. I don't care what you guys are fighting about. I don't care about your parents. I don't care what your parents think about your parents. I don't care. I don't care about Tara and Gaylor. Tara and Gaylor. I just mixed their names. I have nothing to say, right? Uh, Garrett lied about texting his ex-girlfriend versus saying he just liked the message. Garrett, you're an idiot. You should have been honest. At some point, she's going to ask to see the phone. And then if you deleted the message, it's going to create more questions. So I don't know what he did or what he didn't do. I don't know if he was trying to hide anything. It didn't seem like it. I just think it was just like... A, he didn't want to stir the pot further, so he said he just liked the message, but he didn't say that he responded to it. I think that the way he says he responded was not even, like, something to be concerned about. He said something like, uh, well, I hope all is well. Uh, yes, I'm getting married soon. Take care. Some shit like that. But I'm just, like, snooze fest. And Taylor's, like, distraught by this. And she's like, girl, shut the fuck up. Like, at least he wasn't sending sexed like Steven and Monica right like it's not that serious and I'm saying that as an outsider would I be upset yes but it's like it would have been different if he would have said like I miss you let's connect let's get coffee that's concerning he literally said a cordial message saying I'm getting married wish you the best of luck what else did you want him to say you know what I mean moving on uh we got two more couples and then I'm all done Marissa and Ramses they're kind of boring too, honestly. Uh, the only things I have to say, Marissa seems like a sweetheart. I want her to find love. I want her to be loved. I want it to be genuine. Um, sometimes I want to just like hug her. Her mom is a bitch. And uh, it came off really distasteful the way she was acting. Uh, she toned it down a little bit when they went dress shopping, but it was just really distasteful. Like I would be embarrassed. Like if that was my mom, and I brought her on the show and that is the, but if that's who she is, that's who she is. But if that was a representation that I have of my, that I had of my mother on this show, I would legitimately be embarrassed. Like I was at a loss for words. Like my jaw was on the floor, the way that woman was talking and the things she was saying. I'm like, it was just giving very poor class, poor taste. Um, so sometimes it makes me want to hug Marissa because I'm like, you had to grow up with this your whole life. That sucks. Ramses. I don't know you guys like I I want to believe that he's genuine I want to believe that he genuinely cares about Marissa I want to believe that he's genuinely gonna be there I want to believe that he's gonna say yes at the wedding I don't know if he's gonna say yes and maybe I can get through that in a minute um in terms of who's gonna say yes and no I hope he's genuine the whole not wanting to use condom things um people say it's not progressive of him let's be honest even the most progressive people nobody wants to use condoms who wants to have sex with condoms nobody let's be honest about that number one but number two i think what makes it like non-progressive is like separate from non-progressive it makes you an idiot right like people that are like well i don't want to have a baby but i don't want to get on birth control and i don't want to use a condom okay cause and effect no condom no birth control equals baby but you don't want to have a baby so are you freaking dumb right um it kind of broke my heart when Marissa was not feeling well and she expressed her concern of like, you know, the percentage of husbands that cheat or leave their wives in moments where they get cancer, they get sick. I'm like, that broke my heart because it's like she was not feeling well. And I feel like he was pushing the intimacy. And it's like, my guy, like grow the fuck up. Like not everything is about sex, right? And I think that she it's important for her that she feels supported. And I think that's a question mark that she has. And I hope that he's not a piece of shit and he understands that. I don't remember how old he is. 
This is a second marriage. I'm curious. I don't know if he's ever shared why the first one failed, but I'm curious to know why it failed because that could be a pattern of how this second one may or may not fail. I don't have a lot to say. Boring also, but whatever. <sighs> Hannah and Nick. Hannah and Nick. Um, I'm going to keep it brief. I'm going to keep it brief. I could not stand Nick at the beginning. Um, his little Rico Suave, thinking he's cute, smooth talker, basically straight up fuckboy. And mind you, I love me a good fuckboy. I love me a good fuckboy. Uh, they're my go-to. Um, because it's just that energy, right? It's that big dick energy that they give off. Uh, but, um, at first I was really irritated by him. So annoyed. I wanted to fast forward every time he was talking. Cause I'm like, is he just a playboy? Right. But he won me over. He won me over as the show progressed and he connected with Hannah. I did not, I'm going to be honest. And I know it's going to, some people are going to be offended or bothered by this, but I did not think he was going to be attracted to Hannah because Hannah's not little. And I'm not saying big people cannot be attractive. I'm not little, right. But I'm attractive, but Hannah is, um, and it sounds like a body shame. I'm not, I'm big, but Hannah is shaped weird. Um, this is not, I need to stop. Okay. Hannah is shaped strangely. Um, she's very tall. She's boxy and it's just, the math is not mathy. Like her body composition to face ratio or just like off. I know she says she lost a lot of weight but she, I don't know where she lost it from because it's just like, it's a little bit off for me. I didn't think he was going to be attracted to her and surprisingly she was not attracted to him because she thought he was going to be bigger. He looks good though. Nick looks good. Nick looks good. He's not as big as I would like, like the men that I like, but he looks good. Um, what else? Someone just sent me an email. Hannah... As the show progressed, it was very clear from the very beginning, even before they met, Hannah has great insecurities. She does not think she's beautiful. She does not think she's attractive. She does not think she's good enough. She constantly has the fear that the person that she's dating or with is going to leave her for someone else. She's constantly questioning whether or not she's attractive enough, whether or not she's capturing the attention of the person that she's dating. We see that with the lady that he's talking to. Was that rude? Kind of. I mean, if it was my man, I'd be fucking pissed. But I'd probably go up there and tell the lady like, you know what? Go away. Like, I, that's the type of insecure that I am. Like, I'm going to be mad at my man, but I'm also, like, not going to let some old lady tell me something. Like, I'm going to get up and go tell her something and, like, stand there and until she fucking goes away. Because that's the way that I am. Um, then there was the instance where he meets Katie. She lets them talk for 40 minutes, according to her. Okay, bitch, if you have a problem with it, go up and interrupt the conversation and ask them what they're talking about. Like, why I, I don't like it when people wait until like at night before we're gonna go to sleep to bring an argument up. Like, why wouldn't you bring that up in the moment? Why wouldn't you come and intervene and ask me a question or pull me aside? Like that irritates me because it's like you want to disrupt the night right before we're going to sleep. And I don't know if Hannah had a lot of drinks that night, but it's like she was upset because her best friend was saying um how cute uh Nick is. Okay. Call out your friend, dumbass. Why are you calling out your fiance? You're mad that your best friend thinks your fiance is cute. Okay. You're mad that they talked for 40 minutes, but you were there and you didn't decide to intervene. Okay. You're mad because you're insecure. You're mad because you don't think you're good enough. Separate from that, like Hannah has never stopped criticizing Nick. Like I have wanted to hug. I just want to jump through the screen and give Nick a hug. Like Hannah is so freaking criticizing of every single thing that he does and that's only what we've seen on camera i can't imagine what we haven't seen on camera but it's like all she's doing is like attacking this man breaking this man down emasculating this man and it's just like why would any why would anyone want to marry you why would anyone want to be with you why would anyone want to stay with you like as the show progressed and i know this is really messed up to say I can see clearly why Hannah's single, why she applied to the show, why she will remain single, 
why no one would want to be with her and marry her. It's not because she's not attractive. I think she has a pretty face. She's just, her ratios are a little bit off for me. It's because of her attitude. She has a stank attitude. She has a superiority, superiority complex. She's condescending. She's rude. And she's just plain disrespectful. Um, so to sum up this video, um, who do I think is going to see us at the altar? Hannah and Nick are not making it to the altar. They cut it off. Good, because good for Nick. Please find someone that respects you, values you, um, doesn't talk down to you. And Hannah, go to therapy, girl. And I need to go to therapy too, but I'm not over here like destroying the men that I date. Go to therapy. Go to therapy. Uh, Marissa and Ramses. It looks like they're both going to say yes. They talk about both saying yes, but something tells me someone is going to say no. And I think Marissa is going to say no at the altar. Garrett and Taylor, I have a feeling they're both going to say yes, but it, they're not going to last. Tyler and Ashley, they're both going to say yes, but they're not going to last. Um... Steven and Monica, that died. Tim and Alexandra, that died. Leo and Brittany never even happened. So honestly, the only people that are going to get married are Tyler and Ashley, Garrett and Taylor, and neither of them are going to last. That's what I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed both of these videos, and I will catch you guys in the next one where I'm probably going to talk about the finale Fingers crossed that they ask the right questions, all the questions that people are dying to know, that they ask the tough questions and that they don't hold back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much.